after the fibers felt, it's time for the fulling process. Now, the term fulling actually means to uh, shrink and strengthen it as a fabric and to really lock down those fibers tightly. Uh, you may have heard of people felting their knitting, and actually that is really fulling. The term is being used incorrectly. I think people just use it for simplicity's sake. But uh, this is going to really strengthen our fabric and make it a nice tight bond. If you haven't already, put down your non-skid mat beforehand. Um, now you're definitely going to need it under your bubble wrap. So it's still down on the bubble. We'll lay our tool down. And we will lay down our bamboo. These are the placemats. So now, if you think about it in linear terms and the way that the shoe was pressing on the wool, it was one whole hard surface being pressed on that wool over and over and over. Um, the way we're going to do it is by rolling the whole packet up. Try to do it as firmly as possible. If the bamboo scoots and wrinkles, just straighten it out and keep rolling. And take the whole package and wrap it in your stretchy ties. And tie it with a bow because you're going to be fastening and unfastening your package quite frequently and you don't want to have to worry about knots. When you roll your packet, you want to be able to have the entire circumference rolled and not just one little part of it, like this. So you want to be able to get a full rotation of your packet, which means a long roll. Start with your hands and smoothly roll all the way down your forearms. And at first, use a lighter, more gentle touch. You can get a little more aggressive later. You'll roll for a few minutes this way, uh, as long as you can. Lots of times the package will loosen up and that's when I take my cue to unroll it and start again. If the previous roll started from this end, then you want to start from this end and alternate back and forth. This time I'm going to put in a rolling bar so you can see what that looks like. This makes the package much firmer and uh, the rolling can go on longer because you won't have to stop quite so quickly. And continue to roll. If you find this surface is too low, you could boost the table legs by putting something under it like coffee cans or books. You could try it on your kitchen counter I personally like the back stretch of this low table because I stretch out each time. A good tip for trying to cut down on fatigue, besides wearing shoes, which I always do, is uh, when you're rolling this way, put one foot forward and do your, the roll and the stretch, and then alternate your feet. Put the opposite foot forward. to remember which side you just rolled up. As soon as you get finished unrolling, take your rolling bar and put it on that side. That reminds you to roll from this side after you're finished straightening out your felt. Gently pull it. Gently straighten it and, and give it a little tug. You're not really shaping it. You're just trying to get those fibers active. roll from each end, but also flip and roll from each end, and then the opposite direction and each end and flip and again, so that you're really getting a full 
workout on this cloth. Try the different rolling bars to see which one works best. The reason bubble wrap is used is because it makes a good bouncy surface to push up against. It's like a springboard to keep your fibers going up and down. Also, I'd like to point out that the direction you roll is the direction it will shrink. Every time you make felt, you'll learn something new and you'll see the way it reacts to different things. When you've been fooling for a while and you pull and you don't see a whole lot of distortion in your design and a whole lot of stretch, then you know that the felt is really tight and it's really going to be very durable and hold together for you. The amount of time it takes depends on your own working pace, how often you need a rest, and the size of the piece. The piece in this clip took over a half an hour just for the rolling. I'm going to call that enough.